Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today is going to be in two parts, so if you want to skip ahead just to the painting, then there are timestamps down the bottom. Feel free to leap ahead to this part, because today I'm going to very quickly paint this fella. He is one of the Plastic Space Nam, which is a partnership between Reptilian Overlords and War Games Atlantic. Now you will have seen a lot of both of their stuff on the channel previously, but this is their first partnership together. And I figured since I have done the resin, you know, printed versions of Space Nam guys on the channel before, getting a look at the plastic kit might be interesting. So the first part of this video is going to be a little bit of a comparison, and then like I said, painting afterwards. So you can paint these guys up in exactly the same way as I have in some of the other videos, and I will put a little list of some of them in the description because they're quite cool. But today's, all of the paints will be listed in the description below, so let's get started. So quickly to demonstrate the differences between the plastic kits and the 3D prints, I thought it would be useful to put a couple of them side by side. Now obviously this isn't a completely fair test because the plastic one, he isn't painted yet, uh, but there are one or two differences I think you can see straight away. First off, maybe it's a licensing thing, maybe they just want to avoid you know, the aliens crew coming down from a very great height, but the plastics have a... I guess more modern rifle looking finish to the weapons as opposed to the the pulse rifle looking things that the STLs have. The STLs do now also come with those uh, regular rifles too so that's quite handy. Um, if you are looking to bulk out a collection of plastics with one or two prints whether you're doing them yourself or you're ordering them through a third party um, you are going to be able to have them match which is nice. Now the other thing to see is that the uh, torsos, which are on the STLs, they have a lot of equipment which is already attached to them. Because you can print them as one big solid piece, uh, once they are off the build plate, you don't have to go through the fuss of attaching these to the figure, which I found really useful. Now for the plastic guys, I'm going to put these both aside for a second. On the frame, you've got fronts and backs for each of the bodies. Now this fella here, he is basically the third of the armoured torsos, and you'll see he's got the little uh, shoulder pads up there too, but none of them have got anything attached to the waist or the chest or what have you. You do have plenty of little options. You'll see quite a bit is missing because I have been assembling from this frame. But things like pouches, radios and the like, um, you are going to find plenty of them to attach. But you've got to attach them yourself. Not necessarily a downside, it is just a difference between the STLs and the plastics. Now one of the other reasons to, if you have a 3D printer, it's kind of a no-brainer. I would suggest go for the STLs, because the plastic frames, again, a couple of bits missing, uh, but you get four different poses for the legs. Now, I think there's eight off the top of my head for the STLs, it might even be like 10 or 12. But you definitely do have more variety on the STLs, and you can mirror them before printing, doubling the number of poses again. Not so much an option for the plastics. But what I think is probably the coolest thing about the plastic kit is the fact that they've made sure that all of the crazy weapons like the melter gun, you know, flamethrower, sniper rifle, plasma gun looking doofer, you're not going to miss out on anything. Particularly if you're looking at using these as the infantry, you know, the core of an infantry army, you are probably going to struggle to double up that same pose. Like even with just four leg poses, you'd have to be working to duplicate the same miniature twice. There is a bonkers array of arms and weapons, and the heads. I'll let you look at the sprues on the War Games Atlantic website because it is just ridiculous the number of heads that you get in there too. So finally, to painting. I've primed this guy in Zandri Dust. Now, rather than yesterday's Death Guard Green, I think this is going to work much better. Now you could, if you wanted to, instead, I would suggest prime with Wraith Bone or maybe Brain Matter Beige from Army Painter and give him a pre-shade, something like Seraphim Sepia or Agrax Earthshade, and then go ahead and dry brush a white over the top of that once that's done. Now, you can check that out in my Rusted Claw painting video. This is going to come out a little bit darker and a little bit more gritty. Um, some folks are going to suggest there are a million ways that you can avoid some of the chalky texture while dry brushing. 
I want that chalky texture, so we're going to skip those bits. So we're going to start with a little bit of Tyrant Skull. Now here I'm using the Army Painters dry brush set for a couple of reasons. I do ordinarily recommend that makeup brushes are quite an easy way of doing this, but I like the rounded edges of these uh, purpose-made dry brushes. And also the goat here cleans a little more easily. What I'm going to do is actually make this dude pretty light. Uh, what I'm really aiming for is to cover most of him in this tyrant skull. Now, I'm leaving just the Zandri dust in the recesses. So rather than only catching the very highest points, I'm really only leaving the recesses here. Now we're going to move on and do something similar with Praxetti White. I've swapped to the smaller of the dry brushes that comes in the set, and I'm going to prep my brush up here. What we want to do this time is rather than completely covering the miniature, is concentrate on areas where we want the light to catch. So a lot more like a traditional dry brush here. So on the edges of his armor, the corners of his sleeves and what have you, we want to accentuate that contrast effect. We're going to paint it white. Uh, one difference here though is that when it comes to his arms, I want to spend a bit more time and I will make those mostly white. And now we can get to the actually fun parts. I'm going to start by painting his skin. It always helps to start from the lowest layer. So I have here Gilliman Flesh. Oh, more on my brush, goodness me. And I'm going to paint in his skin. And now obviously when I get up to his face and I start getting around his collar, there's a pretty good chance I am going to make a mess of that. Uh, but if you do, what you can do is wait for the Gilliman Flesh to dry and a little bit of a shabty bone to cover over the mistake. Um, it will look close enough to our dry brush that by the time we're done, it will be invisible. Now while that dries, this will be our little secret. I have here some white, and what I'm going to do is, first of all, there was a little blip here where I've got some of this on the uh, armor. But if I want to, I can quickly blast around and pick a few other armor parts to basically give a much sharper white edge. I might have a little too much water on my paint to do that. But you can use this to accentuate your dry brush. Now once that skin tone has mostly dried, you'll see how that settles down quite a bit. We can do more to it later if we really want to, but concentrating on army painting, we're going to just leave that like it is. I'm going to move on now to painting in his clothing, and for this I'm going to use Creed Camo. I'm going to do this in a couple of stages, because I want to do his vest jackety thing first with a smaller brush. This is the base coat brush from the army painter. And then I'm going to swap to a larger brush to paint in his trousers, because the more quickly I can apply the contrast, the less likely it's going to go funky in the places I don't want it to. So there's his vest done. Still drying, but done. If your medium shade brush still holds a good point, you can use that for this stage. Um, but you can also grab yourself a size 2 brush from another range, and uh, something with a nice big well, you know, the big plump bit in the middle of the brush head, which holds the paint, uh, is going to be more useful to you than something with an incredibly fine tip. But all the same, away we go, around the whole miniature, and I'm going to paint straight over the straps, holding on his knee pads. Now with his fatigues mostly dry, I'm going to put him down for a second, because we're going to move on to Gut Ripper Flesh for the armor. But, unfortunately, Gut Ripper Flesh is rather like some of these other light colors where you get a real chalky sediment in the bottom. The only solution here is to shake the dickens out of them. Uh, your Gut Ripper Flesh needs to be a single solid color. Don't leave the gunk in the bottom, or it's not going to work at all. So... Yeah, depending on how long you've been letting these sit, like I have, this can take a little while to really shake it all together. The only solution here is either a vortex mixer or a little bit of elbow grease. But once you have got your daily workout in, load up your brush and start applying your gut ripper flesh to all of the armor plates. Now this is a funny one because it will look dreadful going on, like it's not going to settle properly, but apply 
you know, apply enough just so that it's covering and as it dries it's a kind of magic. Now that is quite a nice green. What I'm going to do next is one that's not strictly on the box art but I think it looks cool and I'm going to do it anyway. What I have is Dark Angels Green and I'm going to use this to paint in some of the hard parts of the rifle and I'm also going to use it to paint in his uh, what do you call it? His grenades. Uh, Dark Angels Green compared to the rest of the greens that we've applied so far is really very dark and on top of that it has quite a nice almost bluish tint to it by comparison so I like it I think it adds a bit of visual interest to our miniature. Now for his equipment pouches, his boots, and the black bits on his gun, I'm going to use here Black Templar. Now you can just as easily, if you wanted to, you know, you want the black to be a little bit different, uh, you could use Black Templar on all of the soft equipment, and then turn around and use Black Legion on the gun. But honestly, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. But of course, the option is there if you want to take it. If you've got a steady hand and a bit of patience, you can also paint the trim on his beret in black too. Don't strictly need to do that, but I think it looks cool. And speaking of think it looks cool, from here what you could do would be to grab something like Lead Belcher or Iron Hand Steel, paint in the little metallic bits, and then give them a wash of something like Nolan Oil. But I want to see how quick we can do this using just speed painting style products. So I have speed paint here from the Army Painter. This is one of their metallics. It is broadsword silver, and uh, I've quite liked using it. It looks a little funky when it goes on, but as it dries, it actually settles really well and looks like a nice shaded metallic. So I'm going to apply this over the magazine, over the tip of his, the barrel rather, the tip of his gun, his barrel, and uh, this little bit on the grenade as well. Now while that is still drying, we can go ahead and apply our final color. Now whether it's for the bandanas or the berets, what I have is Blood Angels Red. And I'm going to go ahead. You might recall that white from earlier. I have already painted in the skull on his beret with it. So I'm going to go carefully around that. But once this is done, and that's really the last painting stage. If there's any last minute bits and pieces that you need to tidy up, you can do that now. But for the most part, try and bear in mind that you are painting for an army. So, don't tidy anything up that people are likely to overlook. Now, once everything has had plenty of time to dry, it's time to go ahead and varnish them. Now, this is an important step. Whether you use a spray varnish or a brush on one as I am here, um, you really must varnish anything which you've got, which is using the speed paints or contrast, anything of the sort because they will wear off uh, if you don't varnish them. So once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go ahead, pop his base on him, and then we'll do a couple of those comparison shots so you can get a look at what he looks like next to some other similar miniatures. So side by side from left to right, we've got the War Games Atlantic Ura. We've got our Space Nam fella in the center. And then on the right, there is the Cadian from Games Workshop. Now the Cadian himself, he is leaning forward ever so slightly, but his posture is such that I think he's a pretty good example for, yeah, the Space Nam guys are definitely in the same height category, but they are way bulkier. Like they're deliberately evocative of old action movies. So you got your Dolph Lundgren, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger looking types there. And that's cool. <laughs> they are supposed to be reminiscent of the Catachans. So that bulky appearance, I think, works quite well. And so, by himself, there he is at last. Our Space Nam, like the fella on the box, is complete. Now, there's a lot you could do from here if you wanted to improve the look a little bit further. Um, you could deliberately highlight the armor, for example. You might try giving the skin a, like a warmish wash, maybe some Riken Flesh Shade, thin down a little bit, and then highlight it traditionally as you would for skin. But I think an army of these guys, like this, will look perfectly fine. So hopefully that goes some way to demonstrating, again, the differences between the resin kits and the plastic kits. I think if you do have a printer, it's kind of a no-brainer. You definitely want to go for the STLs just for the variety that's available there and the ability to mirror parts. I use it all the time for 
pretty much any kit that I use. But if you haven't got access to one, or you want a cheaper way of just bulking out a large army, or even you just want a few guys for a skirmish style game, then yeah, the plastic box is really good. Quite surprised by how well that's turned out. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you very much for your support, folks. It literally keeps this channel going. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and may you all enjoy the rest of your day.